Vermeer been making some robust claims about the state of the US economy, but it's been a turbulent week for the world's stock markets. Share prices managed to rally today after some more encouraging news about the state of the Chinese economy, while oil prices jumped back above the $30 a barrel. But in the long term, the picture is far less rosy. Our economics editor, Paul Mason, is here to explain why. Well, it's not just the long term, John. I mean, this year, 2016, is, many economists now believe, looking a lot like the beginning of 2008, when we uh, sailed into what became the credit crunch, the financial crisis and uh, you know, financial Armageddon. Now, we're not there yet, but some of these signs of falling stock markets, falling oil prices and slowing growth um, you know, across the developed and the developing world is what economists have been focusing on. Here on the British High Street, you could be forgiven for thinking, well, what's wrong? But this big uh, downward pressures in the world economy are building, um, as we've seen uh, only today overnight, with the, with the move of a key commodity price beyond a, a, a floor we thought we would never see. First it was the oil price, now another big, dirty but essential raw material has hit the skids. The price of iron ore fell below $40 a tonne for the first time in 10 years overnight. Day by day, the evidence of a global slowdown is building. Five years ago, a tonne of iron ore cost $160, but collapsing demand and oversupply has knocked the price down to just a quarter of that. The falling price of commodities is, is really down to two things. One is reduced Chinese demand for commodities, and this means that we may see various crises across the developing world, so Brazil, Argentina, uh, African countries who are exporting to China. Uh, and the second factor is obviously the, the decline in the price of oil. China's stock market crash rocked financial markets last week and the slowdown of its economy is a worry for all countries who supply it raw materials. But the bigger problem is this. For years, foreign capital has poured into China in the tens of billions, but now it's leaving fast, and that means China should be devaluing its currency, and when it does, that will export the pain back to the West. To places like this, Port Talbot Steelworks in Wales, where managers and unions are bracing for potential job losses after plant closures and job cuts hit the rest of the steel industry. To global economists, 2016 is beginning to feel like 2008. Bubbles bursting, policymakers at odds, everybody wondering where the nasty, hidden surprise might come from. Some think the answer is right next door. The big problem for me is Europe. Spain, Italy, principally, are in a such precarious position that any external shock uh, coming from the global economy uh, is basically capable of pushing them towards a completely unsustainable scenario. What's certain is we're going into a global downturn with debt at historic highs and something, somewhere, will have to give. Well, it's interesting, Paul, just while you were doing that report, uh, Reuters flashed that uh, Brent crude has gone down below $30 a barrel for the first time yeah, uh, um... since 2004. Uh, any reason to panic here in Britain? Well, um, Brent crude is, is the price of, of, of Brent oil and, and the American measure, WTI as we call it, went below 30 earlier, uh, earlier in the year. So, look, it's, it's all going south. What's the problem we're worried about is deflation, global deflation. Now, so far, there's been this scenario, well, you know, falling oil prices means that, you know, people on stagnating and low wages couldn't afford to live a bit better, and it's a kind of uh, Goldilocks scenario, as we call it, not too hot, not too cold. That's what people have been hoping about, these falling prices of commodities and oil. But the, there is an emerging worry that, in fact, what the world will see is not just one-off falling prices, but this deflation is when it leads to a spiral. Now, you know, the Bank of England uh, is in charge of the UK, in, 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 basically, the UK is supposed to have 2% inflation. We've got nowhere near that. And you know, as we see uh, the year pan out, uh, and the Bank of England's boss, Mark Carney, make statements, one of which is coming up, um, I think we, we are waiting to see what, what their view is of the rising danger of deflation. They've tended to discount it, look through it, ignore it. I think that might not um, last much longer. Paul, thank you. And just in case you didn't hear that, that's uh, Brent crude futures down... Uh, below $30 a barrel for the first time since 2004.